So let's talk about compression. Yes, it is a subject that is very much talked about. There is a lot of mystery around it. And I think that there are a lot of misconceptions. I am going to clarify that for you today. Welcome to the Toman Studio and Recording Channel. My name is Claudio. I'm a music producer. I run the Dr. Mix Studios here in central London. And uh, I really suggest that if you're a musician and you like production and you like mixing and you like gear, I suggest that you subscribe to this channel. Just hit that notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on the content that's coming up on this channel. You know what? Let's dive straight into it. So firstly, let's explain what compression is. So when you have a signal, uh, that may be, for example, the sound of my voice, I can hit certain levels like loud and some quite level like now. So this difference in level, it can be quite disturbing in recordings. So the job of a compressor is to say, hey, above this level, push the sound down. That's all there is to it at its basic level. So the first type of compression that I'm going to explain is compression for leveling. I have this tune right here, which I recorded some time back uh, for uh, the Dr. Mix channel. And uh, it's me singing, forgive the voice, I sound like this. All right, so let's focus on the vocals. You see here, we've got moments where I'm really screaming and there are moments where I'm really quiet. So let's get that bit, for example, okay? Have you heard that? So... So all of a sudden, the, the vocals become a lot louder than the backing track and they, it kind of, you know, doesn't doesn't mix in because it stands out too much. So what are we going to do? You know what, I'm gonna use something really simple like waves, dynamics, I'm gonna go with just our compressor, which is simple enough. Dang. Yes. So here you got your output level and here you got your threshold. Threshold means when the compression is gonna take place. So for example, if I take that bit that we were talking about earlier, which is this one, right? See, it hits here in the lowest part and it hits up there in the highest part. So how about if we say, let's have the tr threshold to, to basically act around here, okay? So the low one is not gonna be affected. The loud one is going to be affected by how much? Let's say that for every one dB that I go above that threshold, we reduce by half. So compression two to one, this is the ratio, two to one, I mean, yeah, around there. So you will see that now this part is barely affected at all, but when we get to this part, see how much more I'm compressing, see? So basically now I'm making the level come down when it's too loud. If I choose a higher thresh, a, a higher ratio, like say 10, 10 to one, for every dB that it goes up, I'm gonna push it down 10 or nine. I can't do the maths, but it's gonna be more compression. Check out. So check here. See, if I go all the way down, you know, so, you know, if, if, if I pull down the threshold even more, you're gonna see this take effect even, even, even more. See, now we are really pushing down that sound. Let's find something that allows the vocals to stay at the right level, not too in, not too out. And uh, usually I use something like compression of, you know, ratio of two for something like this. All right, attack and release is something that I'm going to um, 
get into a little bit later when I show you how this applies to uh, rhythm because it's easier to demonstrate. In any case, if we go back to the track here, you will notice that the difference between having that or not is quite big. It feels like the vocals are all over the place, but when I turn this on, it's in the mix. <laughs> compression for leveling. Next, compression for transients. Now, when the compressor hits, you have a choice to let that music go above the threshold for just a small amount of time. That amount of time is called attack. So it's easy to demonstrate on drums because they have a lot of transient information. Listen to it, all right? So I'm gonna use exactly the same compressor as before. Waves, dynamics, our compressor. This time it's stereo. So um, I'm gonna compress a lot, check out. All right. You can hear the compressor pumping a lot. Now, what happens if I leave a little bit of time for, for the compressor to act, which means I'm gonna increase the attack, check out, all right. Okay. Check out the difference between this and this. See, like this, I'm chopping off the, the beginning of, of, of the drum, so I'm really destroying them. But if I push it to the right, can you feel it? Can you hear it? It's just, you get a little bit of knock, just, just in front of every instrument. Check out. Let me pull the, the gain a little bit up because of course we are compressing about three, three dBs, what, five dBs here? So we want to make up for that. So let's call it five dBs. And again, without it, with it, right? So, with the compressor, I can also control the transients that are passing through it, which means I get in control of the attack, right? Next, compression for color. Now, something really nice that some compressors do is they color the sound. They make it richer in harmonics. Let me demonstrate how that works. So if I go back to my vocals and this time, Instead of our compressor, I choose um, the CLA-76, which is this one. Now I'm gonna set it to really extreme levels so that you can appreciate how, how the sound changes, all right? Let's solo this. Vocals, solo. Oh, 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 oh. Let's push it. Now the release here is quite slow. Let me make that faster. See how faster it recovers, yeah? Versus this, you see? So we wanna have something faster in, in this occasion because I just want to show you how the sound changes, yeah? Oh, you quero é samba. Alright. Esse samba que é um misto de maracatu. É samba de preto velho, samba de preto tu. Now, of course, the the voice gets squashed a little bit, but it also becomes a little bit screamy. Is that is that a word? It shouts, you know. It it feels like I'm uh, doing this with my voice. Check out. Without it, más que nada, un samba como este tan legal. 
você não vai querer que eu chegue no final. So basically it creates harmonics and it sounds in a way that's very pleasing to the ear if you need something a little bit more aggressive. Compressors like this will give you that effect. Of course, you want to be careful how much you use it because the more you use it, the more distortion you get. Oh, oh, adi adi oh. Right? But you also squash it a lot. Um, so I have a solution for when that happens. You want a little bit of that texture, a little bit of that aggressiveness, but you feel that it's squashing the sound a bit too much. Let's get to the next type of compression, which is parallel compression. Now, parallel compression means that I'm going to keep the original signal, I'm going to make a copy of it, and then I'm going to compress that a lot, and then just add a little bit of that compressed sound. Let me show you how it works. So, in Cubase, this is very simple, which is one of the reasons why I like Cubase a lot. All I need to do is go to the lead vocals, and then I go add effects to select a channel, and this is going to be a mono track. I'm going to use Waves CLA 76 again. I'm going to make it a mono track, and this is going to be, and this is going to be parallel, and my symbol for parallel is equals. Done. So now I have this, which is a parallel vocal. It's gone down here. Let's put it back up here. All right. So now, um, another thing that I want to do is I want to uh, make sure this is pre-fader. And uh, this means that the amount of signal that I sent to lead vocals, let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see it better. Yeah. Right. Yes, there you go. So the amount of vocals that are going in here are not affected by the slider. So um, I go to all the way to zero. So we have precise copy of oba, that. Okay. Oba, oba. So now I'm going to press L so that I can listen to just the compressed signal. All right. Here it is. Oba. 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 I'm going to compress it a lot. Let me go back here. All right. Oh, adi adi o. Oba, oba, oba. Oh, 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 Maybe that's a little bit too much. Adi adi o. Oba, oba, oba. Okay, that's nice and gritty. You, you, can, you, can, you can hear that, right? So here's what's going to happen. Now, I pull this down and I'm listening to the mix. Maybe I can pull the main down. Maybe I can pull the dry down a little bit. And check what I do. So basically I'm obtaining the, the best of both worlds because I don't have to ruin the sound by slamming down the level all the time, but it's like I'm adding a super hyper compressed version of it, which pushes from below so that the sound never really goes below a certain point. And that certain point also is a little bit distorted to give it more character and more sound, <laughs> more juice. I'm just going to play for one last moment, yeah? Un samba como este tan legal, você no va a querer que yo llegue no final. Oh, ari ara yo, oba, oba, oba. Isn't that great? Well, uh, I hope that by watching this video, now you know a little bit more about compression. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments here below. I will try to answer them. Otherwise, I hope that you're doing super well, that you're feeling good and you're making great music. I will see you next time.